Welcome. Today is February the 3rd, and we are here celebrating not only the Word, but also the feast day of St. Blaise, Bishop and Martyr. St. Blaise was the Bishop of Sebaste, or of Armenia in modern Turkey, and it is known that he was fomented and killed, or tormented and killed during the persecution of Lysisius, um, and that persecution took place between 320 and 324. Among the stories about Blaze is that he cured a young man choking from a fishbone, and the blessing of St. Blaze is evoked uh, against throat ailments and is, is appropriately given in winter when colds and viruses are more frequent. And so we remember St. Blaze today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, hear the prayers of your martyr blaze. Give us the joy of your peace in this life and help us to remain the happiness that will never end, that we may gain it through Christ Jesus, our Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We also want to remember um, Archbishop Blaise, who is the new Archbishop of Chicago, um, as he begins his new ministry there uh, among the people of God. And um, it's interesting to note um, that as he begins this um, new ministry, um, that he's in need of a lot of our prayers um, because of... Uh, what he is called to do as an archbishop, and not only to lead an archdiocese, but also to teach in the region, uh, which is the metropolitan region. And you and I belong to the metropolitan of Los Angeles. And then starting in Stockton, they belong to the metropolitan of San Francisco. So we're quite unique in California because we're the only diocese in the United States of America that has two archdioceses. All the other ones that have archdioceses are one hmm. in a state, mm -hmm. and not every state has an archdiocese. I didn't know that. So, so we're pretty lucky, I guess. Mm -hmm. So today we're actually looking at um, the gospel, and um, you have Mark chapter 5. Mm-hmm. Verses 21 to 43. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come lay your hands on her, that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, If I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. And the woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and in trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? 
Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid, just have faith. He did not follow anyone to accompany him inside, except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha kuam, which means, Little girl, I say to you, arise. The girl, a child of twelve, arose immediately and walked around. At that they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. And so at first both Jairus and the woman who spent her life savings on doctors wanted physical contact with Jesus, touch of the garment, laying on of hands. So in both cases, Jesus looks beneath the surface touch the deeper contact of faith. Through faith, we make contact with the Lord, and there is no advantage to those who touched his cloak back in Galilee 20 centuries ago. We can contact the same Jesus and be healed by the same saving power through faith and the sacramental liturgical life of the church. Christ is there. He is part of the reality of of the church. And we experience him in his loving, healing, merciful hand um, every single day. But we have to look for it. It isn't just something that just happens, um, but it's something that we continually look for to strive for a deeper understanding of what happened, why did it happen, and also what was the purpose of it happening. So at the heart of the two gospel miracles is the petitioner's faith, faith in Jesus Christ and in his power over sickness and also over death. The synagogue official Jairus draws himself um, at Jesus' feet, throwing himself there and really pleading with him for um, the gravely ill daughter Um, who then, as we hear, um, later dies, but um, the father is not going to give up. So the unidentified woman has been the victim of both uh, her ailment and also her doctors because her affliction has rendered her ritually unclean and she does not uh, presume to approach Jesus um, directly. Still, disregarding both the social and also the religious probabilities, we find that she touches Jesus' cloak. And some scripture commentators note that this is the only miracle story where Jesus does not initiate the cure. Of her own accord, the afflicted one reaches out to touch um, the, um, or to snatch, if we can say, the garment of Jesus, snatching, as it were, the power of God. Jairus and the woman believe that Jesus has the power to heal, and Jesus grants their wish. And so where might be our belief in Jesus' power to Mm -hmm. heal? Um, Maybe we don't have it, and, and maybe we could also have lost sight of our own ability to bring about healing of God in each other's lives if we truly understand um, that we are children of God and God has come to us in his Son so that we might go out to the world and share his Son with others. So there's the challenge. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.